All right, excellent. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today for the MS in Management or MSM Program Overview Webinar with the Notre Dame Mendoza College of Business. Allow me to introduce myself just very quickly. So my name is Phil Drendel. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions and Lead Recruiter for the MSM program. A brief background on who I am. I grew up here in South Bend, Indiana, just down the road from Notre Dame. I went to undergrad here as well. I was a psychology major. After graduating from Notre Dame with a psychology degree, unfortunately, I, there was no MSM program at that time. So I decided to move to South Korea where I was an English teacher. I lived there for nine years um, with a variety of different positions, teaching from kindergarten all the way through being an English professor at a university for a couple of years and even worked in administration. You can see the Seoul skyline on the left there. After nine years, I decided it was time to take my talents back to South Bend. So I moved back home, started my master's in higher education administration and started working for Mendoza in March of last year and started full-time in my current position in November of last year. So it's been just over a year full-time with the MSM program and I've loved every second. You can see me on the right there playing the tuba. I did join the marching band at Notre Dame. I was in the tuba section for a couple of years. Um, a lot of great memories, so much so that I had to come back to Notre Dame to work. So that's just a brief introduction of who I am. And just a little bit of background on the University of Notre Dame. So Notre Dame was founded in 1842 by Father Soren, who is a French Holy Cross priest. Um, and he and seven other brothers traveled to Northern Indiana in the middle of winter to found this university, the University of Notre Dame. Um, you know, it, currently they, they wanted to build a university that was the most powerful means for doing good in the country. And we've really stuck to that mission ever since. We currently have about 12,000 students with 3,000 of those being graduate students students from all across the United States and the world. Our business school was founded in 1921 by John Cardinal O'Hara, who saw commerce as a way to advance civilization. Um, you know, he, he has this quote here, the primary function of commerce is to service mankind. Again, with, you see it everywhere on my slides, but growing the good in business, we really believe that mission. We believe that business is a way to service the community, to service mankind. Um, and now Mendoza ranks top ranked programs in undergraduate business, graduate business, and executive education. Um, I believe we're number six undergraduate business program in the country. We offer eight graduate business programs and our MSN program is ranked in the top five. We were also one of the first universities in the United States to offer an MSN program. Um, it, it's a relatively new program in the US, but it's gaining a lot of steams. And we were the first university along with a couple of others that really started this program in the United States. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my camera so you don't have to see me blocking these slides. Um, but just a little bit about our mission. So I mentioned that we grow the good in, in business. You know, who are we at Mendoza? First and foremost, Mendoza is a community. It is a family. Once you're a part of Notre Dame, you're a part of that Notre Dame family for life. Even if you're here for just one year in the MSM program, we're going to treat you as family. And you see that close-knit community in a, lot, a variety of different ways. We are a very collaborative program at Mendoza. A lot of presentations, group works, um, you know, team research projects. You are broken up into cohorts when you're a part of the MSM program. And those co cohorts are very tight knit. And then that's broken up even further into learning teams. You know, we, we understand that the MSM program is, it, it, it's teaching new information for a lot of you. You know, this is a program designed for non-business majors that want to then get into business. It's new information and so we, group you in learning teams with others that have complementary skills. 
So for example, if you are an engineering major, we trust that during your time as an engineer, as an undergrad, you received a lot of quantitative courses. Maybe that's a stronger area of yours. You may be grouped with someone who is a poli sci major, who maybe has done a bit more writing, a little bit more of the soft skills so that you can help each other out. So that community is a really strong aspect of who we are at Mendoza. And that goes into our network strength. You know, Mendoza is rated number four for alumni effectiveness in the world. We offer over 270 alumni clubs worldwide. Um, so pretty much anywhere you are, anywhere you go, you'll be able to find other people that are a part of that Notre Dame family and will welcome you either in a professional setting or a personal setting. We also stress experiential learning. We understand that what you learn in the classroom is only a part of your entire education. So we offer what are called interterm intensives. Um, basically one week in the fall and one week in the spring, we've used this time as a way for students to apply what they've learned in a hands-on setting. So whether that means a mini case competition or bringing in you know, various local businesses or nationwide businesses to do some mini capstone projects or you know, some deep dives into particular skills, we allow you the opportunity to use what you've learned in the field. Um, we also offer global opportunities. We have international immersion opportunities with trips abroad to Asia, South America, and South Africa. Those usually take place in the spring. It's a 10 day, one credit program. And then ethics. Ethics is woven throughout the curriculum. It's not just a class. It is who we are at Mendoza. Again, our mission is to grow the good in business. And we believe that with the business acumen that you will gain in the program, as well as with your background, you will go forward and impact the world, whether it's at a very local community level to a broader level. You know, it's the importance of asking how decisions impact those around you and the world as a whole. And so you will find ethics woven, as I mentioned, woven throughout the curriculum. I'm not saying that other business schools don't offer business ethics course or they aren't ethical, but it really is something at Notre Dame in Mendoza that we really stress. So going into the MSM program, the MSM program, as I mentioned, is an 11 month program. It is designed for those students, those applicants with no prior work experience and without a business background. So um, average work experience is zero to two years with you know 75% of our applicants coming directly out of undergrad. It is possible to apply if you have more than two years of work experience. But if you have more than three years of work experience, we would probably ask that you explore one of our MBA options. As the curriculum for the MSM is designed specifically for those students without work experience, on the flip side, the MBA is designed more for students who have a little bit more extensive work experience. And this is a program for non-business degrees. If you have a business degree, we would ask that you apply to another program because you actually would be overqualified for the Mendoza MSM program. Um, you know, like I said, this program is designed for students that want to blend their unique undergraduate backgrounds and majors with the business skills that they get. So a lot of the courses are designed for students who maybe don't have exposure to specific business principles. So if you are a business major, we ask that maybe you look at another one of our specialized master's programs. We do accept business minors, econ majors, science business majors, poli sci majors. Um, I would say usually the cutoff with credit hours for business is around 18. So if you have more than 18 credit hours as an undergrad in business, we would probably say that you're a little overqualified for the program. Um, but if you have less than 18 credit hours or your business exposure has been very specified or is very niche, then you would absolutely be willing, able to apply. This is a collaborative cohort. We have actually increased the size of the program this coming year to around 90 to 100 students. Traditionally, we've only had programs around 50 students, but 
in response to COVID, a lot of job offers have been rescinded. NCAA athletes have received extra years of eligibility. So we decided to increase the size of the program this year. We're currently, we had 86 students matriculate this year, and we're looking at expanding that slightly next year. Now, you'll still get that cohort feeling. We're still gonna break that group up into 45 to 50 students, um, and those cohorts changing for each term. Again, this is designed for a wide variety of majors. About 30% of our students are, you know, STEM, maybe 20% separate than STEM is engineering specific, and then 50% arts and letters of some sort. A wide range of majors that are all coming together and from a, a variety of different colleges and universities as well. Um, you know, you see here that we have Notre Dame, St. Mary's College, Holy Cross College, but also Cornell, Columbia, BYU, Florida, UCLA, Penn, of a, you know, from all across the United States. I would say as far as breakdown between Notre Dame and non-Notre Dame, about 35 to 40% of our class comes from Notre Dame and the rest comes from non-Notre Dame institutions. The program structure is as follows. So we begin classes in June. Um, June 15th is usually the week of orientation somewhere around there. And then the following week classes would begin. We do ask that you have your undergraduate bachelor's degree conferred by the start of the program. Um, we know that we start a little bit earlier than some other programs, but because it's such an intensive program, we, you know, it is important that we hit the ground running here in the summer. So you're getting, you're, you're really diving into it right away after orientation, seven weeks of intensive basics of business. And then you start with the fall semester we kind of split it up into what we call modules. It's almost the quarter system. So in between mods one and two in the fall and then three and four in the spring, that's where you'd find those interterm intensive experiences that I mentioned before, those you know case competition or deep dive into skills. And then in that spring uh, interterm week between mods three and four, that is where the international immersion opportunity would be. It is an optional opportunity, um, but one that we find a lot of our MSN students really enjoy. I'll speak a little bit more to that later here. As far as the curriculum is concerned, we're covering a wide range of subjects. So from the more quantitative side with accounting and finance to this more of the soft skill sides like management, communication, marketing, management, business ethics. I want you to notice this course in the bottom left of your screen called Bridge to Success. The Bridge to Success course is um, our signature career development center led course. It's taught in the summer and it's basically a way for you to create your own personal brand. We know that you all come from a wide range of backgrounds and majors and undergraduate institutions and you're blending it with the business acumen that you're gaining in the MSM program depending on what sort of position you're looking for. The recruiting cycle starts as early as September. Consulting is usually starting in September and October. So you need to, need to be able to market yourself and present yourself in the strongest way possible pretty early on. So this Bridge Success course will cover things like resume and cover letter, specified depending on what position you're looking for. Um, we do things like virtual interviews and virtual fairs, how to navigate those and use the time to the best that you can. You're also working on things like cold calling and happy hours and, you know, various ways to make sure that you are fully prepared for the job hunt ahead of you. Because for, for most, most of you, if not all of you, this MSM program is a step in achieving your goal of working in a professional business setting. So this Bridge to Success course is vital. It's taught by the MSM career coach. Her name is Lisa Michaels. She's been with the program for a few years. She's wonderful. Um, she's also available to you outside of the Bridge course. She will work with our students one-on-one -on -one to make sure that they are able to look for positions and be prepared to interview for positions that not only fit their goals, but also who they are you know, fits their passions and their ideals. 
She's available to our students. Some people use her once a week. Some people, you know, they, they know kind of what they want to do and they don't contact her as often, but she is a great resource that's available to all of our MSN students. That interterm experience and electives. So fall, the fall 2021, we usually do some sort of deep dive on campus. Um, this year we had some international companies zoom in. Obviously we can't really travel anywhere <laughs> under the current circumstances, but we, we allowed them to zoom in and work with our students. Our students created some amazing you know, responses. They were given some raw data and some, a problem basically, and we're asked to, hey, fix this problem. Um, again, a great hands-on tool. In the spring semester, you have the opportunity to do this 10-day international immersion trip. Like I mentioned, it's a one credit course. So there is some sort of deliverable usually associated with it, whether it's a presentation to a board or um, you know, some sort of video blog or some sort of paper when you return. But this trip allows you to experience business internationally and kind of compare it to what you've learned in the classroom. It's also a great way to interact with people outside of the MSN program. These international immersion trips are open to MBA students, MSA students. And so our MSM students, you know, you can network across various programs. This is possible outside of the international immersion trip as well, but it's a great way to kind of work together and continue to building that network, gain insight from someone with a little bit different background. It is an optional trip and the, the Fees associated are separate from what you'll find on our website. Now, do know that every year the university does kind of help offset the cost of that trip. Um, they help contribute to the students, you know, ability to travel there. So it is something to keep in mind when you're applying, if you're worried about price and things like that, it is separate because it is optional. We do have students that decide to stay in the States, to stay on campus, again, do a deep dive Last year we did Business Improv, which is an amazing program of teaching students not only kind of the comedic improv side, but how to leverage those skills learned in a business setting. It was an awesome time. Elective options. This year we are looking at increasing the number of electives possible. We've always had electives, you know, possible in the past. One that has been a highlight has been this 10 years hence lecture spirit series that happens in the spring. It's an awesome lecture series, but we are looking at increasing the number of electives possible. Um, these can be various courses in Mendoza, non-MSM courses, if you want to kind of specify. We've had students in the past that have taken MBA level courses. Um, if there's a particular field that they're interested in or They've taken courses outside of Mendoza, an undergraduate course in a non-business setting. Um, you know, you're here at Notre Dame for a year. So we wanna make sure that you have the availability to access all of the resources that we have on campus for our students. Basically in order for these electives to be possible, you would just need permission from the professor in the program and your academic advisor to kind of get permission to take those courses. We are looking at possibly having students test out of a course as well in the MSM curriculum. You may have noticed that the uh, one of our courses mentioned is a business econ course. For economics majors, we are allowing you to test out of that course currently because we understand that as an econ major, you've been exposed to a wide range of economics principles probably all of which will be covered in this class. So if you're an econ major, you do have the option of testing out of that if you'd like and filling it with a different elective. Another change for next year is the addition of concentrations. We're looking at using the spring semester to allow you to kind of deep dive into more specific skills. Ones that we're exploring now are sports management, digital marketing, and business leadership. So the summer and the fall, you kind of get that base competency, and then you'd use the spring to more hone in on specific skills. For example, the sports management program. Um, currently, we are we have a course that's offered by former Notre Dame women's basketball coach Muffet McGraw, 
she is teaching a course in Mendoza currently that is a huge hit. So hopefully we're able to continue that course moving forward. We've received a lot of positive feedback on these concentration tracks. Um, student organizations. These organizations are open to our MSM students. So obviously the ones on the left, the MSM Association is basically student government within the MSM. Um, leadership roles, community service, student activities, you would be in charge of kind of organizing these for the MSM. For example, last year's class, the way that the schedule was set up, every Friday, there were no classes. And so the MSMA kind of organized a community service day every Friday. They would go out into the South Bend community and do some sort of community service as a team in the morning. Um, it's a great way to not only hang out, but also to, again, apply what you learn and to really grow the good in business. They, they make class apparel and they also work with other um, associations. So there is something we're looking to introduce called the council. I know it sounds very ominous, but the council is all of the specialized masters associations. So the MSM, the MS in accountancy, business analytics, and our new MS in finance programs. Those associations will have members that work together in order to create more, you know, broad opportunities. So whether it's um, activities for all the specialized masters, like a trip or a trek or something like that, or, you know, organizing some lecturers to come in and speak. That is something that we're looking at increasing some leadership opportunities for you all next year. There are also student organizations within Mendoza that are open to MSM students. For example, the Marketing Club, the Business Analytics Club, Women in Business, these are run through the MBA, but they're open for our MSM students. Again, it's a great way to not only network, but you're able to kind of get that mentor-mentee relationship with the MBA students that maybe have a few years of work experience and kind of you know learn from them and their experiences to see if what they're doing is something you're interested in. And it's also a great way to, again, give back to the community, to learn some specific skills that will help you moving forward. And then finally, all Notre Dame clubs are open to graduate students as well. There's pretty much any club that you can think of that's available um, from the undergraduate side that's also open to our MSM students. I know that their last year, I believe, the juggling club is one that was started. A few undergrads wanted to start a juggling club to teach people how to juggle and do group juggling and things like that. There's also the game cornhole or bags, it depends where you're from. In Indiana, we call it cornhole, um, where you know that club started as well. So pretty much if there's a club that you want to join, there is one available. If it's not, we encourage you to start your own club. It's a great way, again, for you to share your background and your experiences with those around you. Now, with the admissions process, the, the application is fairly straightforward. Um, it's, it's not that difficult. I will be hosting a webinar probably next month, sometime in January, with an application q and I'm happy to answer those questions again for you now. Remember, if you have questions at all during this, feel free to use the Q&A function um, and I can easily answer those admissions process questions as well as general questions regarding the MSM. But as far as the application is concerned, a resume, just a one page resume is absolutely fine. An essay, two pages, double spaced. We give you two prompts, you choose one. Four slide PowerPoint presentation. Note that you will not actually be presenting these slides. It's just a creative and fun way for you to kind of show who you are, what you're interested in, what you're passionate about in a fun and creative way. We leave the prompt vague on purpose because we want you as an applicant to have fun and you know show your creativity. A big part of the MSM program is presentations group projects. And if it's just essays via slide and words on blank backgrounds, it's not the most engaging or captivating. So we encourage you to have fun with this. Some examples in the past of what I've seen. Um, I had one 
applicant who chose the four slides to do you know, a very specific look at how zoos are run. She worked in a zoo prior to uh, uh, you know, applying for the MSM program. And she had a very unique and very interesting look at zoology and you know, how zoos are run in America. It was very fascinating. It wasn't necessarily just about her hobbies or anything like that, but it was very much related to who she was. Um, you know, another student made graphs of his life. He quantified every single aspect. He was able to show some humor, but also some interesting facts. And it was, again, a fun, easy read. I would say with these PowerPoint slides, less is always more. Don't try to cram too much into the four slides. If you want to have a title slide, that's cool. If you don't want a title slide, that's cool. It's up to you. Um, we just ask that you keep it to four slides. Two letters of recommendation. When you apply, we just need the email addresses of your recommenders, and then we send them a separate form. We do ask that at least one of your recommendations be from an academic source. So a professor, an academic advisor, a department chair, something like that. If you want both of those recommendations to be from the academic source, that's absolutely fine. But we do ask that at least one of them be able to speak to your accomplishments and the capabilities in the classroom. When you apply, you only need your unofficial transcripts and exam scores. When I say unofficial transcripts, I mean it needs to have your name, your school name, your classes, and the grades that you received in those classes. It doesn't have to be anything more official than that, but we do need at least that information in order to evaluate your application. If you attended more than one university, we would need transcripts from every university that you attended. Now, if it's a study abroad, a position, you know, where maybe you went to one school, but you did a semester abroad and you, know, you went to a different institution if you were in Rome or London, or you know, I was in Auckland, New Zealand, something like that. As long as those courses and the grades are reflected in your undergraduate institution transcript, that's fine. We don't need anything separate from them. Um, but other than that, unofficial transcripts are fine. Same thing for exam scores. So with a GMAT or GRE, when you take your exam, we, we allow you to take either the online version or the in-person version. I know a lot of places are not offering the in-person version at this time due to COVID. That's totally fine. If you take the online at-home version, it's this, we, we would still accept those scores. Um, but we only need the unofficial scores in order to evaluate your application. You should get an email or a screenshot of your scores right after taking the exam. That's all that we would need. This year, we are introducing a GMAT or GRE waiver. So if you are a Notre Dame undergrad or that you completed your undergraduate education at Notre Dame and you've graduated already, or those from non-Notre Dame institutions who graduated or currently have a 3.5 cumulative GPA or higher. So again, stressing that cumulative nature, if you started at one institution, um, and then you transferred schools, we would look at that entire GPA. If you have that 3.5 or higher threshold, we would waive the GMAT or GRE requirement for your application. That being said, I get a lot of questions like, Phil, is it really waived? Um, yes, it is really waived. We will not penalize you or there will be no detriment to your application if you decide not to submit a GRE or GMAT score. If you would like to still give us a GMAT or GRE score, that's absolutely fine. If you think that it possibly gives a better picture of who you are as an applicant, or it strengthens your case as an applicant, or it potentially would make you eligible for a larger merit-based fellowship, then feel free to go ahead and give us your GMAT or GRE score. But if you would like to have it waived, it will in no way hurt your chances, if that makes sense. Um, in order to ask for the waiver request, you would simply, in your application, check the box that says 
I would like to have the GMAT or GRE waive, please. Um, and then we would go ahead and look at your GPA and uh, confirm that is the case. For international applicants, if you have a GPA in a different scale than the 4.0 scale. It does take some time for the WES evaluation for us to be able to do that and make sure that it does match up. We understand that different countries have different scales and you know sometimes those scales are weighted. And so if you think that you have a very strong GPA, like we, we've worked with a lot of international students in the past, we can kind of tell on first glance where that 3.5 out of four GPA is um, but we want a WES evaluation just to make sure. So bear with us. If we don't respond to you right away, or if if the, the waiver on your application isn't confirmed, just that's why. It's because we're taking time. Um, so if it is waived, it will just, it will show up on your application as grayed out. It will be a check mark for the GMAT or GRE score. Um, there's also a $50 application fee, however, as a thank you for joining me today, if you use the code IRISHWEB, all one word, all capital letters, that will waive the application fee. Uh, just again, thanking you for joining me today. And then there's also an interview portion of the application. Not everyone is invited to interview. Um, however, should you reach the interview stage, you will be invited via email. We're currently doing only Zoom interviews. We're not doing in-person interviews, again, because of COVID and the dangers of traveling. The university is kind of shut down and discouraged visitors, especially in buildings at this time. So that will be a Zoom interview, but you would receive an invitation via email if you are to be invited to the interview. Um, a couple of questions here I'm going to go ahead and answer regarding the application while we're here. Um, one question regarding the letter of recommendation and that academic reference. Um, a dean of student life, a student life director, that would be absolutely fine. Um, you know, if it's someone that's in the dorm, we kind of want to see the how you are from the school or university side. So it doesn't necessarily have to be directly in the classroom, but just someone that knows how you are at the school. And then if you have someone from a more professional side, like an internship manager or uh, you know, your part-time job boss or something like that, that's also fine. Um, if you don't have a professor that you can ask, I would say the student life person is absolutely fine. Um, so uh, another question here about PowerPoint submission. You will not be doing any sort of presentation. So there's no audio recording that you need. You're just gonna upload it as a PDF. So we're just looking at the slides um, you can just have text on the slides. Again, don't, I would say don't focus too much on the text. If you want to use pictures or clip art or some sort of cool design, that's great. Don't just have words on a slide, but as far as descriptions go or, or captions or anything like that, text, typed out text is just fine. Um, you don't need to add an audio recording because you are just uploading it as a PDF to the application and therefore, you wouldn't necessarily be able to attach the audio file anyways. Um, internship opportunities with the MSM. We do not have internship opportunities with the MSM simply because there is not quite enough time to have those internship opportunities. Um, you know, the program begins in mid-June and you're going straight until graduation in May. There, there may be potentially a couple of weeks in the winter, but it's not traditionally something that we help our students do um, simply because a lot of places won't have internships that short in the winter time. And then once you graduate, we have students that go on to do internships, but a lot of them are looking for full time positions instead. So um, internships are not primarily a part of the MSM career search simply because you're here for 11 months. You're doing the summer term, fall term, spring term, then you're off potentially, hopefully, to start your job after graduation. So uh, those, those internships aren't, there's not just enough time to be able to do that. Um, I'll get to other questions, keep them coming. Remember to use the Q&A function if you can, please, instead of the chat function, um, I will go ahead and answer that in the chat. But if you can use the Q&A, that's totally fine as well. Admissions deadlines. 
So as you see, our early decision round and round one have already passed. Round two is coming up relatively soon. You have just over a month, which seems like a long time, but uh, it sneaks up on you. When you are applying, um, like I said, in order to apply, you just need your portion of the application to be completed. So that means your essay, your resume, your slides, um, your, your email addresses of your recommenders, and that's it. We don't need your letters of recommendation quite yet. Your transcript would help, your test score would help, but it is actually possible to apply before doing that. So if you're taking a GRE score in the future, you can actually indicate a future test date in your application saying, hey, I'm going to be taking uh, the GRE January 25th. You can still apply by that January 12th deadline and kind of reserve your spot in round two. Uh, graduate applications are a little bit different than undergrad where you just have a couple major deadlines and that's it. We give you numerous deadlines to kind of fit your schedule. We understand that everyone is busy, different institutions have different schedules, finals, things like that. So we wanna give you many opportunities in order to apply. The benefit of applying sooner rather than later. So obviously the earlier that you apply, the more guaranteed seats there are in the program. I usually don't anticipate this being a big deal until we reach St. Patrick's Day. Um, so between round two and round three, not a huge difference when it comes to seats. Where it may be a difference is merit-based fellowships. Every applicant is eligible for a merit-based fellowship. You'll find this on the additional information page of the application in order to be considered. You would simply just select in the drop-down menu, yes, I want to be considered for a merit-based fellowship. Then the admissions committee, should you be admitted to the program, would extend a fellowship award based on your application simultaneously. Excuse me. So we, we look at each application holistically. We know that you're more than a test score. You're more than a grade. You're more than an internship opportunity. We look at everything. We read every single word of your application. Um, and typically, the, the ranges of those fellowships are $3,000 to $15,000. The earlier that you apply, the more potential fellowship money there is available for you. If you are an international applicant, um, we would strongly, strongly encourage you to apply no later than round three, February 9th. That's just because since we are in person with our classes, we don't offer online courses. You need to be here in person. It gives enough time for the I-20s and you know all the visa paperwork and appointments with your local embassy to happen so that you can be here by June. Um, if you apply later than February 9th, it depends kind of which country you're from as far as how quickly it is that you're able to get uh, an appointment with your local embassy. But with COVID happening and a lot of things being delayed, we found this last year, it is challenging. And while a defer request may be possible, those are not guaranteed at all. We, you know, a lot of students were unable to be granted deferrals last year. So um, we would encourage you to apply by round three. When it comes to international applicants, I will say that we are not a STEM designated program. If you are interested in a STEM designated program, our Masters of Business Analytics, the MSBA program, is a great option for you. However, we do have international students every year that apply to the program. We usually have between you know, three and eight international students as a part of our program. I know that seems like a relatively low number, the reason being because the MSM is a relatively new program in the United States, a lot of companies, um, you know, they, they place more emphasis on an MBA. So if, if you have the option between those two, they, they will often go with the MBA. It, it is tough for us to kind of predict which companies are hiring international students from the MSM perspective. Of course, we are still Notre Dame. We're still worldly you know, renowned. So our international students in the past have been able to find jobs. For example, two years ago, of those looking for full-time positions in the MSM program, 100% were offered positions in the MSM program. So 
I'm not saying that you shouldn't apply to the program. I just want to make sure that you are aware of the various challenges when it comes to being an international applicant, but I'm sure all of you are already aware of this anyways. Um, just some final notes before we hit the Q&A and I see that there are a couple questions left here and I will be sure to get to all of your questions. Just why the Notre Dame MSM? I mentioned that one-on-one -on -one career coaching, that Bridge to Success career class. We want to make sure that you are able to take the skills that you've learned in the Notre Dame MSM, go forward and get that job you know, in the professional business setting. Our program sets you up not only for that first job after the MSM, but that second job, third job. Because you're being exposed to all of these various business principles, you are able to pivot when more is asked of you. If you are getting a promotion, they're probably going to ask you for some more responsibilities and maybe a field that you're not currently doing. But with the MSM, you have exposure to accounting, you have exposure to finance and marketing. You are equipped to handle that, uh, you know, that transition. International immersion to Asia, South America, or South Africa, you have the ability to travel abroad in a one-year program, which is pretty amazing, but also you get to apply what you've learned in an international setting. You get to learn from your classmates and you get to see how business is done elsewhere around the world. We also have the option of pairing your MSM with a one-year MBA. Notre Dame Mendoza offers a one-year accelerated MBA program. As a graduate of the MSM program, you would become eligible for that one-year MBA. Now, the large, vast majority of our MSM students will go forward to work a few years before coming back for that one-year MBA. Um, our MBA programs, usually we require at least three years of work experience for those applicants, simply because if you don't have the hands-on exposure to what you are doing in the business field, it's tough to know how to use your MBA to focus. You know, in the MBA program, you are choosing basically majors or concentrations and you're honing in on those specific skills. However, if you don't have any experience using those skills, how do you know if that's what you actually want to do? Um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I want to do consulting. But then when they actually get into consulting, they realize, whoa, 90 hours a week is tough. So I want to do marketing. And then they use their MBA to more hone in on those skills. Or some people love consulting and they're able to manage it. So they do that, their MBA with consulting. So we have had students go directly from the MSM to the MBA. You know, if you have some internship experience and you know what it is you want to do, but I will say most of our students go and work a couple of years before coming back. And then there is that Notre Dame alumni network. Again, we are, we have alumni clubs around the world. I would not have been able to find my first position in South Korea if it wasn't for my Notre Dame network. I wouldn't have been able to come back to America and start my internship at Mendoza if it wasn't for my network. And I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for my network. I owe a lot to that Notre Dame alumni network. And again, once you're a part of the Notre Dame family, you're in it for life and you will find people that really appreciate that. Again, as a thank you for joining me, use the code IRISHWEB, all caps, all one word, no spaces. You will find this at the bottom of the additional information page. If you remember, that is where you'll find at the top of the page if you'd like to be considered for a merit-based fellowship. At the bottom, that's where you'll put the application fee waiver code. Uh, so that is it. That is, I know a lot of information, but I just want to thank you again for joining me. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I'm going to now open it up to questions that you have here, and I, I will stay on for as long as you would like. Um, all right, so we have a question here. Do all accepted applicants receive an interview, or can you be accepted without an interview? For the very large majority, an interview is a part of the process. Now we are looking at kind of changing the way that we do interviews a little bit um, as far as timing of interviews is concerned. We're looking at doing all day interview clusters as opposed to our current format. However, I would say 99.9% .9 of all of our accepted applicants received an interview of some sort. So uh, it, it is a necessary step. 
we would ask the interview because again, we looked at each application holistically and a large part of that is who you are off of paper, the conversations that you have, you know, being able to see your mission fit and why you want to come to Notre Dame and how you want to use an MSM degree and all things like that, that yes, we can find on paper, but sometimes a conversation is just easier. So we would probably ask that you do have uh, an interview. All right, and, and feel free again to answer or to, to type in any other questions that you may have. Um, I'm happy to answer those for you at any time. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> okay, I have a question now about concentration. So when would we be able to choose our concentrations? You would not have to choose your concentration until you are admitted to the program and most likely not until you arrive on campus. Um, the way that this works is uh, we're still kind of working out the kinks. This will be the first year that we offer concentrations or tracks in the program, um, but we're gonna have you on campus and then we're gonna kind of have you rank your desire for which concentration you'd like first and foremost, and then the other ones and we'll kind of go from there. I don't anticipate there being any situation where only one concentration is chosen and people would have to pursue a concentration that they don't want to pursue. All right. Any other questions at this time? All right, a question here about the GMAT or GRE waiver. So if you're above a 3.5 and the GMAT or GRE is waived, are the chances significantly higher or other factors into play? Um, so while the GPA and the, you know, is a great indicator of how well you'll, you'll, you'll succeed in the classroom, we do look at a variety of different things. So it's not necessarily guaranteed that you would be admitted to the program if you have that 3.5 GPA or higher. I will say for our current class, our average GPA is around you know, the, the middle 80% is around like a 3.3 .3 to 3.5. Average GRE scores around a 310. Average GMAT scores around a 640. So that kind of gives you some idea of the strength of applicants that we're looking for. But again, we're looking at a wide variety of, you know, factors. What community service and leadership positions have you held? What extracurriculars did you do during your time as an undergrad? What part-time jobs did you do in your summer? Did you use your time wisely? Um, you know, with a 3.5 GPA, what institution did you go to? What classes did you take? Things like that. So we look at a wide variety of things. I wouldn't say that you're necessarily, you're, you're definitely not guaranteed a seat in the class with a 3.5 GPA or higher. That being said, as I mentioned, there, there won't be any penalty for not providing a GRE or GMAT score. So if you have a score that you'd like to use to again, help strengthen your application, definitely go ahead and add that. Um, if, if not, if you believe that your GPA speaks for your strength in the classroom, that's absolutely fine. I think that the earlier that you apply, it's a nice card to have up your sleeve in case you need it. Should you be waitlisted for whatever reason, um, you have the option of using that GRE or GMAT score you know, to show again the strength of your application or possibly to increase the merit-based fellowship um, offer. Um, with, with that merit-based fellowship, international students do have the same opportunity as domestic applicants. That merit-based fellowship is open to all of our applicants. We do not place preferential treatment, you know, over one over domestic or international or anything like that. So as long as you indicate that you would like to be considered for the merit-based fellowship, we will look at all other aspects of your application in order to offer that to you. So that is an opportunity that's open to international applicants as well. Any other questions at this time? I know that we are coming up towards the end, but feel free to use the Q&A function um, 
at this time if you do have other questions. All right, it's looking like I've answered those. If you are like me and you have three more questions as soon as we end this webinar, that's totally fine. Um, I would ask you, you if you want to email me your questions, that's totally fine. If you have the opportunity to set up a one-on-one -on -one call with me, that's great. I do have an upcoming coffee chat next week um, that you should be receiving an email for shortly, or you can find the link to register on our website. That's also totally fine. But if there is nothing else, I just want to thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. I hope that you and your family, friends, and loved ones are staying safe and healthy during these uncertain times. And go Irish. Have a great day. Thank you so much.